Hi, I'm Carrie Lass, the Assistant Superintendent of Business Services for Walde Consolidated School District. And I'm here today to, to share some financial information about our district. We'll start with some school basics to provide a framework for how our budget works. I'll provide some historical information related to funding and what it has looked like for our district over the last several years. You'll, you'll see that it's been challenging. So I'll also share how we've responded to those challenges. And then finally, I'll wrap up by discussing our budget process and, and where we are today. School funding in Michigan, in order to, to truly understand our current funding model, we need to go way back to, to 1994, 1995, when it was first put in place. At that time, districts were locally funded through property taxes, and that meant that a district's funding level depended on their respected community and what the community would support. So as you can imagine, it, was, it led to a large disparity in the funding levels, with some districts well-funded while other districts struggled. Changes were proposed and put on the ballot with the intention of accomplishing two main goals. The first was to lower property taxes, which were out of, out of control at the time, and also to decrease the gap in school funding across the state. The new system centralized funding, moving it from, from the hands of the local districts over to the state. Local districts could no longer, and haven't been since that time, been able to go to their communities to ask for additional support through millages. Instead, the new system would provide districts with a certain amount of money for every child that attended their schools. That per pupil amount is known as the foundation allowance. A minimum foundation allowance was initially set, which had the immediate impact of reducing funding disparities as all districts who were below that funding level were immediately moved up to that minimum. Foundation levels are adjusted every year by the state and not every district is funded the same. Students are counted twice a year and those counts determine a district's per pupil funding level. Wild Lake Schools currently has 12,252 students that were able to count for purposes of funding. And so that generates over 1.8 or $108 million for 2001, 2021, 2022. The school aid fund is uh, the pot of money that is used to pay for these foundation allowances. Various different revenue sources go into this fund in order to create those dollars. The state uh, collects various different taxes. The three different, the three largest sources are property tax, sales tax, and income tax. And you can see, although state lottery funds are talked about often, they represent only 7.3% uh, of the pot that, that ends up going to schools. So once again, the primary funding formula for school districts in the state is uh, the foundation allowance provided by the state multiplied by the number of students that were allowed to count. This graph shows our per pupil foundation allowance since 2010, 2011. In an effort to balance the state budget, school funding was cut in 2011, 2012 by $470 per student. You can see that drop. It took eight years to get back to that level of funding and even today, we're still just 2% above the 2010-2011 allowance 11 years ago. This chart shows our district student enrollment history. We are, we're not unlike most districts in Oakland County and the state, showing large losses over the last decade or so. Most recently, and for several years now, the primary contributor to that decline has been low birth rates in the county we capture just over 7% of uh, the children in Oakland County. Each year for the, last, uh, for the last several, our incoming kindergarten classes as a result have been two to 300 students less than our graduating seniors. So as we saw in the previous chart, funding levels have been stagnant and have uh, not nearly kept up with inflation. And we've also been experiencing declining enrollments uh, for many years, as you can see here. As a result, when the funding formula is applied, the district's total state funding 
has been declining every year in spite of foundation increases. In fact, our current funding level is $24 million lower today than it was 11 years ago. The year over year declines have made it challenging to keep up. Having less funding each year has meant that in spite of reducing budgets by millions of dollars each year, we're still continually chasing this deficit. It's impossible to cut staff at the same rate as funding declines. Even when we lose 200 students, they can be spread between 19 buildings and 13 grades. They're not concentrated in a certain building or a certain grade where it would make it easier to create corresponding reductions. We can have a large decline of 200 students or more and not be able to reduce any staff as a result. What have we done? How have we managed funds during such a challenging time? Well, we've made some tough decisions and we've worked hard uh, collectively with our employee groups to manage this together. 15 of the last 20 years, we've made multi-million dollar reductions. The list is too long to name of all of the things that have been reduced or eliminated entirely. Eight of the last 11 years, employees have contributed by way of various wage and benefit concessions. Together, these two items or measures have saved nearly $76 million for the district. We've also raised funds where possible. We've sold a host of property and are opening an early childhood center, just to name a couple of the things that we've done. The use of fund balance or the district savings account has also been used when possible to assist with balancing budgets. And we've done that uh, many years over the, over the past several. We've also worked hard to address defining enrollment where we are impacted by lower birth rates, as I mentioned. Our community is also a great place to live. And so families tend to stay even after their, their children have grown. In, in an effort to get ahead of it, we've taken, taken the suggestion of Plant Moran Cressa. That is the firm who performed a facility study for the district. They suggested that we close two elementary buildings, uh, which we did. And we sold those respective properties on purpose to developers who then built subdivisions there with the intent and hope that families would continue to, to add to our district count. We're also hopeful that the new early childhood center and the junior kindergarten program uh, will also be additional ways to attract and retain families in the district. We also offer school of choice, allowing hundreds of, of students to join our district every year. These are just a couple of the many ways that we've worked to address declining enrollment, and it continues to be a focus. One of the most important ways that we manage the district finances is through the budget process. It's the, the main tool used for financial planning. We start the process early, long before we know what the state funding will be or what our student count will be. As a result, it's based on many assumptions and that's done, done so by design. And then it's modified throughout the year as more and more things become known as known uh, things can, can replace assumptions, the, the budget becomes more accurate as we go through the year. The budget comes before solutions and it gives us insight into where we would stand if we did nothing in, in the absence of changes or reductions if, if those become necessary. The projections guide our planning and they're merely a start of our discussions. Actions follow the creation of the document. And so over the last 15 years now, I've created a, a budget document that's been recognized and awarded by the Association of, of uh, School Business Officials. In, in order to submit the document for consideration for the award, it must include hundreds of required elements. The document itself contains a wealth of historical data as well as projections for the future. This is one of the primary documents that drives our budget discussions and helps us to determine if uh, we need to trim budgets and by how much. Because it shows several years into the future, the figures can be scary at, at first glance and, and that's uh, on purpose. It's so that we can get a, a true picture of what things would look like in the absence of changes. Every meritorious budget award document then created in the last 15 years has included similar results, results that show deficits in years to come. Those deficits have never become a reality, 
because of the planning that follows or comes after those projections are, are evaluated and, and reviewed. We've acted upon those projections. Historically, administration and the Board of Education have made the necessary reductions to ensure fiscal health to the tune of, of $76 million, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, following our audit each year, our auditors uh, attend one of our board meetings to present their findings, and they've regularly praised administration and the board for the work that we've done to ensure fiscal health, and we're proud of that. That leads me to now. The historical level of grant funding that resulted from, from uh, the COVID pandemic provided Wild Lake Schools with an opportunity to do a host of things. One of them included the opportunity to avoid making drastic reductions this year, which would have been the case in the absence of these funds. Reductions that, that we knew would hurt kids at a time when they most needed additional supports. Remember, we've made multi-million dollar reductions in 15 of the last 20 years. The cumulative effect of those has been drastic. So how exactly were we able to avoid reductions? Well, we used the grant funds and, and how we use them allowed us to add $9.9 .9 million to our district fund balance, uh, nearly doubling it in 2020-2021. This was just a piece of our plan and it was with the intention of using that addition over the next few years to assist with managing potential uh, deficits without having to reduce teachers or other positions. Our budget will be amended again before the end of this fiscal year, but our most recent amendment projects a deficit of approximately $2.7 million. What that means is that $2.7 million would come from our fund balance or savings account uh, to, to cover those costs. Our original budget for the year included using 5 million of fund balance. So as we've completed our planning process for grants and budgeted the corresponding revenues and expenditures, we're able to reduce that to the current $2.7 million. These grant funds, in addition to enabling us to provide new supports and programs for kids, have provided us with some stability, stability with class sizes and current staffing at a time most needed by our students. As we work through the budget process for 2022-23, grant funds will continue to be a part of the solution, along with containing costs where possible and using a, a portion of fund balance as we, we work through that process. I truly appreciate your time. And as always ask that you feel free to send comments, questions, or suggestions uh, to the, the budget link or the budget address there, budget at wlcsd.org. Thank you.